testing APIs has never been easier with this brand new feature of Visual Studio that's gonna blow your mind. I'm gonna break down everything you need to know, so tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James and I'm back today talking about how to better develop using productivity tools in Visual Studio, your backend APIs. In a recent video, I talked about DevTunnels, one of my favorite new features of Visual Studio that lets you put your local host online to share in the development cycle, but also better test your APIs on things that can't reach localhost. So things like Android emulators or devices, or just sharing that API with your colleagues in real time, and even actually testing websites. But as I'm detesting my APIs, I don't want to have to actually have a full GUI application with me at all times. And that's where this brand new feature of Visual Studio comes into play, which is the ability to use .http files, which enable you to debug your RESTful service calls inside of Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so the first thing here is I'm inside of Visual Studio. I have my monkey endpoints that I've been using in a bunch of different videos. We have our gets and our puts and our deletes and all this other stuff, right? Now, when I run the app, I get my Swagger UI, just like we've seen before. And this is great because I can come in, I can try out APIs, I can execute them, and I can go ahead and see the monkeys coming back in near real time, which is really, really cool. Right? So I have all the different monkeys here. Now, the thing is, if I come in and I go and I want to do a, a post, I need to go fill in information, I need to go back and forth. The main problem here is that I have to go back and forth. I have to then minimize this down. I need to go update some code. I might need to delete some code. I might need to change my function back and forth. Like that's kind of a pain. And that is where the brand new .http files live. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in and I'm going to go in and say add a new folder, I'm gonna call it playground. It can be anything you want, it's just a folder, it could be in the root file, it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna add a new item here. Now, uh, inside of our search, you can search for HTTP, you can see I've obviously tested it recently, but there's a .http file. I'm gonna call this uh, monkeys.http because this is gonna be for all of my monkeys specifically inside this application for testing these APIs. So that's what I want to go ahead and give a try. So again, now that I have my HTTP file here, I'm just going to run my backend API again and spin it up. So it's actually running in real time because we want to test that API in real time. So again, we have our Swagger UI, but we don't want that. What we want to do is come in and start to just build APIs. And when I hit enter, I get rich IntelliSense in my HTTP. So I get all of my gets, my posts, my puts, and my all of those other options for RESTful calls. So let's do get. And so all you gotta do is write the verb. And I am gonna need to grab the URL. So I'm gonna grab the HTTP URL. So you're gonna just need that once. And I'm just gonna do API. Let's make that a little bit bigger. And there's an API slash monkey. And I'm just gonna hit run. Look, there's like a little play button right here. How cool is that? So when I hit run here, it's going to send the web request and show me the results inside of Visual Studio right here. So here's all of the contents coming back. Now, uh, when I'm done and I want to do another call, so for example, I can just hit three uh, little ampersands here, not ampersands, uh, hash, hash marks, uh, if you will, um, I can go ahead and do another get. So you're kind of sectioning off your APIs based on these little hashes. So I can do get, and let's say I did the same thing. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this URL, and I wanna do slash one. And then when I hit go, I get slash one back. I just get the one monkey inside there, which is cool. So that's really, really neat, right? So I'm able to actually create these APIs, I'm able to test them in real time as I'm developing my application. And this is calling my endpoint. So if I come in at a breakpoint here, you know, I can hit this main get, and I'm hitting this breakpoint inside of my running application. I don't need to stop the application tonight, right? new calls or anything like that. It's all just here for me. Now, the other thing I can do, which is cool, is I can actually write variables inside of this. This is another neat feature. So if I wanted to, for example, not hard code this one in here, I could say at monkey ID equals one, and then I could use this inside of here. So I'm just gonna do uh, curly braces, double curly braces, hit monkey ID, make that a little bit bigger here, and there we go. I just have 
this specific monkey ID here. So I can make this one again. Now it's hitting one. I can make this two. I can do this here. So you could test your APIs in real time, putting it in here, which I think is really, really neat. Okay, so what else can I do with HTTP? Because you saw I have a bunch of other commands. So let me go ahead and make a new uh, RESTful call here. And I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, post. Again, I'm going to post to that API. Now, how this works is we're going to need to post some data uh, up to it. And you can put as much JSON as you want in here. So when I hit enter, we'll see that I have a bunch of other options here. So accept, I can do access control, authorization, I can do content types, cookie, dates, forwards, froms, ifs, all sorts of different things inside of here. Um, I'll link to documentation for all this. So it's, this is really cool. So I'm going to say, well, I need to post some content. So I'm going to say content type. And the content type specifically is application slash JSON. Now, when I go in, I need to then give it some data. So I'm going to give it a new line here. And what this is doing is this is sort of, you can see the collapsing here. It's, you can collapse these down, which is really neat. I need to paste it some JSON. So I'm just going to paste some code in here. I'm going to say James from .http. So we have our content type. We have our JSON that we want here. You can have as much as you want. And you can even minimize different bits and pieces of this down. So that's kind of cool. So there we go. Minimize that JSON down or the whole method. And let's go ahead and post it. Boom. Just like that, we get James from HTTP. If I call this get again, there we go. I get number two back. If I want number 15, I get my get back right there. Boom. And I have everything readily available. This makes it so it is drop dead simple to be testing your APIs directly inside of Visual Studio so you don't have to hop back and forth and back and forth. And for someone like me that does presentations all the time, I no longer need to have a bunch of scripts or I need to have anything else out there. I can put this all in there, which I think is really neat. And of course, I could create variables for anything that's inside of here. So this monkey ID is here, but it could be strings. It could be the whole URL. It could be anything you want. So this is really, really awesome. All right, well, there you have it. Have you checked out the .http files inside of Visual Studio? It's mind blowing. I think it is so unbelievably cool. I think that this feature and dev tunnels and all these different productivity tools really make Visual Studio just delight to use when I'm developing my backend APIs. And of course, any of my mobile desktop and web applications all with .NET. Now, the cool part here is that you saw is that this isn't really anything specific with .NET, right? It's just a .http file. So if you're writing different backends or have different backends out there that you even aren't debugging locally, you can test those too. It's just inside of there. Now, if you are more of a command line person, there is an HTTP REPL, uh, which I've used before, which is also neat. I'll put links to the show notes for that as well if you're more of a command line person. But I love this thing. I'm a GUI person all day. Are there any other nifty tools that you're using in Visual Studio for your backend API development? Let me know in the show notes below and comments below that. Um, I would love to hear what you're using. I'd love to do videos on that as well. There's lots of tools out there, right? I've used Postman before. I've used Swagger before. I've used all these things. But I love having having it integrated into Visual Studio. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and get notified every single time I put out a video. So until next time, I'm James. Thanks for watching.